Welcome to Ella's Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. The Bernie and Sid Show. Guaranteed to be enormously successful. It's not the normal talk show. It's without the BS. It's about truth, the damn truth. New York's truth, the truth behind the BS. For New York, nothing at all in between. Hi, this is Gilbert Godfrey. Hi, this is Jim Norton. Hi, this is Cindy Lauper. Hey, how you doing? It's Matthew Modine. Hey, this is Lisa Lampanelli. This is Chris Matthews with Bernie and Sid. Hi, everybody. It's Gene Simmons. What did you say? First of all, I love you guys. You're terrific together. You're terrific apart. Bernie and Sid. Why are you listening to them? I have no idea. Live and local on it. You never know what's going to happen. Exclusively. Bernie and Sid. 77 WABC. I know you're going to miss me. But, man, you have no idea. You have no idea how much I'm going to miss you. I wrote this down, and um, I want you to remember this. We were neither dissuaded nor diminished by the intellectually, morally, and ethically crippled losers, the likes of a racist, bigoted civil rights charlatan, or the insecure, envious, shock jock all howling in a chorus of like-minded yapping mutts, lost in the dust of the caravan, rolling by on the road to greatness. Rolling by on the road to greatness. We did that. You did that. I did that. That's what we did. You goddamn right. That's what we did. How do I? Very emotional morning here at WABC. The young man that was about, uh, I don't know, about 90 minutes ago saying goodbye for the last time and paving the way for the new Bernie and Sid in the morning show, which, of course, comes your way at 6 a.m. this um, this Monday morning. You know, 50 years, I guess. First show was June of 1968. Last show, March of 2018. That's a 50-year run of which... Bernard spent uh, the better part of three decades. I was in and out. Can you believe that? For two decades. I Do I just, believe it? I was just talking to uh, my friend Mikey Breen. Mike Breen. Yeah. And uh, he was there back in the 90s before you. Yes. All right, please don't remind me. I used to hate Imus when he would go on and on. You'll never be Breen. You'll never be Breen. I'm like, I don't want to be Breen. Breen was great. But I mean, uh, uh, some of the days were just... <laughs> Among the most raucous uh, times, yes, ever. Honest and fun. Some of the days and crazy, and some were awful, and some were brutal. We can be honest with the audience now. Th there were days that was we wanted to be anywhere else, but that was you could have uh, put us right in the middle of Fallujah. We would have been fine. That's what made it all. Yes, work. Yes, was I, uh, Mr. Imus would set this uh, table of tension. Yeah, of. <laughs> just yeah. absolutely palpable a hostage video. It, 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 he would set that 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 ambiance, and uh, off that we were interesting ambiance. Yeah, that's what you would call it. <sighs> well, yes, I mean, you well, can have good ambiance. You can have bad ambiance. He made yeah. me cry this morning. So, well, uh, I must be cold blooded because I just don't cry at anything. Right, I don't cry at movies. Were well, you the only person that cried this morning? Rob cried. Tony cried. Guns was hysterical. Uh, Lou was choked up and I cried. And you were like, I, I, that's just is me. the coffee I, hot? Listen, this, no, no, no I, I, look, I, I, I fully appreciated the gravity of the moment and all that stuff. But I don't cry. No, you don't cry. I just don't cry. What if I died, you son of a bitch? If you, if, you, I, if I thought you could see me, I would try to, uh, you know, have some tears fake roll down tear. my, yeah. Right. But. You know, it's it's. You didn't it, cry. You're gonna cry when your daughter, who, by the way, oh, my daughter met your on, daughter. Don't bring in the daughters. When she gets married, you're gonna cry, and you do that that father daughter dance. Yeah, but, well, my daughter, of course. Yes. My 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 kids, 
and my uh, wife Carol, of right. course. The, 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 but not me. So I'm not. So all this, I love you. You know, this texting at four in the morning. This. No, no. You know what? Uh, because you have become like a brother to me. True. I, I and I've seen you. I've seen you. Uh, I've seen you when it, when you were really really down, and I've seen you struggle back, and 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 I'm you know just just. Just the camaraderie we've had over the past couple of years here. No, you're like a brother, of course. If something happened to you, I'd cry like a baby. You would? Yes, of course. I might kill myself tonight just to see that. <laughs> well, I can't see it, but... But if you... If, let's say, uh, God forbid, you... You just... Yeah, you, you, we stopped working together. Oh, then you wouldn't care. I would care. But not as much. But I wouldn't cry. Right. See the difference? Because at this point, my, mm. I have value to you. I have value to you because I'm part of this wonderful show. Well, no, no, no. You, no, no, you no, missed, no, no, misconstruing. No, no. I, 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 my, I am just. I'm a cold. I just block. I just do. I, that's just me. Whatever. But I saw all you guys uh, uh, crying and hugging this how morning. How are you cold though? You send me the I, nicest. Look, I'm, that's different. You can be nice, and uh, and I'm not a mean person, but I can't. I'm not a. I, you're not a crier. I, 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 you're not I'm a crier. not a crier. Right. I, I, I just don't. And I. You cry like during the like Brian song. Um, I go to my mother's, uh, my mother's uh, 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 grave, grave, right th at the cemetery, and I don't cry. But that's an Irish thing. You're not supposed okay. to. Okay, supposed to drink. I'm giving you an example. Right, but you didn't cry like. It ain't um, had so I don't take it personal if I say if, uh, all of a sudden we stopped working together. Uh, well, of course I'm that I wouldn't it cry. Well, of course I'm taking it personal. Listen, not that I didn't. Lo I love, uh, you know, I cry, but I, I just can't. I, 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 I yeah, just, you know. Anyway, listen, Mr. Rimes is gone. Will, will you cry out of joy? Bernard, on I'm not, Monday morning, when you and I take over this no, I haunted... No, no, no. I'm not going to cry. I don't cry. You know, Rusty Staub died today. I cried. He died today? Yes. Rust, opening opening day for me? the Mets. Mets are about to host the St. Oh. Louis Cardinals in about four hours out in Queens. And LeGrand Orange, one of the greatest Mets of Jesus all time. Jesus Christ, I didn't hear this. Yeah. Now you're going to cry? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you, break up a little of, bit. You're gonna cry with Rusty Stop and not over me. You know why? Because he's a redhead. That's why. He used to own a restaurant on First Avenue. Rusty's Ribs. And when I was engaged to my aforementioned wife Carol, we went there for for a meal. I mean, uh, it, it wasn't set up through via Rusty Stop or anything like that. Right. But somehow or other, he knew or recognized me or something. And he came over to the table. Rusty. Rusty Stop. How you got to cry now? You met him like that. I did. I, 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 it's the first I've heard right here. Rusty Staub is dead. Wow. Dead. Yeah. That's sad. How yeah. old was he? 73. Oh, man. He wasn't in great shape the last couple of no, years. No, no. I, I heard he was sick. Yeah. No, he's also fat. Okay, He fine. hit shots off the wall in 85 and barely make it the first. It's like watching Fred he, he won a marathon. He was a good guy, though. Ah, oh, he was beautiful. He was a good guy. One of the worst trades in Met history, by the way, when they traded him to uh, the Tigers. A young Rusty Staub from Mickey Lolich. Right there with the bad Nolan Ryan trade. So, well, the good news, Rymus is unlike Rusty Stop, he's not dead. Rymus well, is not right. dead. He, he's, he's 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 got four years, uh, four f five years or so on, on Rusty. Uh, on Rusty, so uh, he's he's way ahead of the game. He is. He's got a book deal coming out. He he, he was intimating this morning. That's Imus. right. He's got yeah. got a, one, one more big uh, project in yeah. the future, and and plus we saw on Sunday morning. He lives in one of the most beautiful spots on earth. Yeah. So what does uh, that mean? F him, basically. He's so fine. that means that, yes, that means God bless. It was uh, it was uh, it was more a celebration today of a wonderful career, right? Than some uh, you know tragedy. No, no, of course. And there's a there's that's a, the way I look at it. No, I know. And for some of you guys, all of us, Jill, did you cry? She did. I, I was. She was crying. I, See, Jill I, actually, and cried. she hated Imus for like the longest time. He wasn't very nice to me. Right, but she still cried. But I, I don't do well with hearing men cry. Yeah, so it, no, it's rough. Uh, Few of the guys were actually running outside, like MLK screaming, "Free at last! Free at last! Free at last!" <laughs> well, we're not going to mention any names, Tony Powell. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, Tony was actually no, he, he was broken. He, he was broken. No, I was great. I just did a great job, man. I'll say this: you and I are going to have a nice long run together. I know it. We're great. We're not good. We're great. Um, but I really did like. I appreciate these last couple of months with Imus. No, like the end of it. Well, you and he, uh, I mean, listen, let me just say this. This is, this is I know Mr. Imus very, very well. Uh, it was for Charles, he used to, he had an off-air 
relationship with Charles McCord, which um, and a couple of other people, Mike Lupica, he's, it's stuff he's, he's talked about on the air. And then Charles went away, and that uh, then Connell came in, and he had a nice, I guess, kind of off-air relationship with him as well, and a good, very good on-air one as well. And whereas with me, off there was no off-air relationship whatsoever. Right, like, I, I didn't talk for a half hour on the phone at night with with Mister Imus, and uh, but not because that's just not that's what just you because do. my personality. Right. again, my my you didn't, personality. You didn't return my text for two years at one point. Well. I don't know if it's two years, but <laughs> that, that's me. I'm a, right. a, a, again, you know, if I could be on a, in the witness protection program, I'd sign up for that. You cause, are, cause basically. For whatever reason. What, that's just a different deal. But right. So when Connell left, then you filled that void. Yeah. And, Mr. Ryan, and you filled it very, very well. And he Thank enjoyed you. his relationship with you. Thank you. On the air and off the air. Well, you know, a, a little off the air story. Um, we did have that the last couple of months specifically. He said we got close. We got close. And I said that in Talkers Magazine a couple of days ago. But my son had an issue, which, of course, you're aware of, Bernard. And it was a bad issue. His school, Peck Slip School in Manhattan, was really doing a lousy job. And it was affecting my son in a lot of different areas, including behavior. It's the nicest, most angelic little boy you ever met. And he was becoming a Vodachaya. And it all went back to the school. And we reached out to Don and Deirdre. What's a yeah. Vildekaya? It's kind of like a uh, uh, kid who just like just acts out and uh, okay, Gabe. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Hard to hard to believe because I know Gabe. But, right, but exactly. Yes. You know Gabe as well as anybody. So Danielle reached out to Don and Deirdre, and they did an amazing job helping us with Skip, which is that organization, and they did a lot for us. An attorney. Now we've moved schools, and Gabe is thriving. Both academically and and um, personally. Oh, sweet! But it really, the help that Don and Deirdre provide, and I mean phone calls in the afternoon, Don yeah, to me, they, Deirdre to Danielle. Great people. It was like great. That, right? It was great. So we started to get that going last year, and then of course with the show, like you said, I kind of assumed that role. You did, and it, it was. And it's a it was very. Okay. It, it was, cool. was crucial to uh, Mr. Imus, and he. You could tell in the. Uh, Last few days and weeks, yeah, he expressed it on the air, and yeah. and and, 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 and uh, you know somebody. Well, you you were the guy. I I'll tell you my my last conversation with Mister Imus off the air. <laughs> he used he used to call me up in the mornings, uh, prior to the show before uh, six o'clock, and uh, well, what's going on? And I'd talk or whatever, and usually for about three maybe to five minutes. But uh, the last time, and this was about. Maybe a month ago. That was the last call. Was some, I think it was a yeah. month ago. Yeah, three weeks ago maybe. And I don't know for whatever reason, maybe my tone, whatever it was. He goes, well, "I can tell you don't want to talk to me." And then he just hung up. Hey, that was it. Right. <laughs> That's the last right. time I would talk to him. That off was the it. Air. Really? I, 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 you don't want to talk to me. Click, click. And then he probably called me, you bastard. <laughs> right after that. Oh, still don't want to talk to me. Bernie don't want to talk to me anymore. That's and, it. He's and done. meanwhile, you know, I was probably just scrambling for, well, you know, when he says what's going on, um, right. trying to think what 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 would, you know, maintain his interest or whatever. Well, you assumed, so I maybe hesitated for you, a moment. You, you assumed a huge response, and you did great, by the way. You were doing the news and the briefings and the bits, the cardinal. So you, and listen, <laughs> for as long as I've been a part of this show, on and off for now 20 years, Hymas gives a lot of credit to a lot of folks, and it's all deserving, all of it. But for me, and I'm not saying this because you're my partner, I love you, which is all true, there was nobody, I'll include Charles, whoever you want to throw in here, there was nobody in the history of the Hymas in the Morning program more integral to that show's success than you. You were the guy. Very nice of you. Th through, Thank you. Uh, through every news guy, uh, through every uh, decade, you started to take on more and more responsibility. Well, there was Charles, of course, and then there was uh, Connell, and uh, nope, there nope. was Larry Kenny, and there was nope. Rob Bartlett. Nope. You were the guy. I was, uh, I was you a, were the constant I, I was a guy. consistent presence. That's right. And, and I, remember, I don't know about the uh, most integral. Yes, you are. Uh, I'm not, yes, oh, well, you're being you. humble. And, and after every decade, you would assume even more responsibility. <clears throat> he would rely on you, lean on you even more. He would. And well, you always came up big. You always I, came I, up big. I, I didn't get there until 1987, and by then, 
the Imus uh, juggernaut was well in place. That's okay. But it had to stay in place another 40 years, Burn. 40. So. 30. Uh, since that date. It's actually 40. It's 2018 from 87. 87. Right? Oh, 30. 30, yeah. right. Excuse me. So you, you, um, you're you being humble, but you, I mean, I deserve, you were the guy. I deserve a, a, like a three-quarter disability pension at this point. <laughs> 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 no, but I was paid well, and it was all good. It was... Look, I raised a family. I, I I bought, paid for a beautiful house, put the kids through college, and it was a, it was a, it was a good life. And I owed all to uh, Mr. Hyman. Yeah, yeah. And um, beyond that, I'm not going to cry. Well, beyond that, I mean, uh, it's our turn. So and that's then, right. Yeah, not only does it come off, I don't have to come off like, oh, that's the end of that. But you know, we, you and I met on this show. We yes. became friendly on this I mean, show. That exactly. Yeah, that was the genesis. Yeah. Uh, of this was uh, was was Mr. Imus and you and I and the rivalry that we had. People used to think, "Wow, Bernie and Sid hate each other." Oh, you don't even, you don't even know. <laughs> we would you don't we would know. get into a, a battle. On well, the back air. then, you know, ET, you know, when we <laughs> first met like fifteen years ago, it was still the wild, wild west. So I can make every Irish joke in the book. You can make every Jew joke in the book. <laughs> and we would really get nasty. That's right. Nasty. And, and, then, you, and you always, every single, you were banging Danielle for years. Tell your wife to stop calling me. Danielle this, Danielle that. <laughs> Remember for at the, years. At the fight, I presented you with uh, the an autographed yeah. cup. Son of a... I, I, I. <laughs> I said, here, give this Wasn't to you. bad enough, you kicked my ass. This is to your wife. Then your you, wife. Well, that was, that, that was before. That was for Danielle, that's right. Yes, right, that's right. Well, so, but then, but afterward, we would we would come out and just laugh and say, that was great, oh. you know, and we would... Not only do people think we hated each other, but they would go, I swear to God, they go, in Florida, a lot. Because we would still talk, and like I said in talkers a couple of days ago, it's true, we, we kind of joked about this almost 20 years ago. One of these days, we're going to do something together, and it became... More of a serious conversation the last couple of years, obviously. But people go to me, that guy uh, McGurk up there, he's an anti-Semite, right? <laughs> I go, what are you talking about, anti-Semite? He's the nicest guy. He's all his friends are Jews. No, no, the way he hits you on that ring. <laughs> no, 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 no. He hates the Jews, doesn't he? Wait, wait, I go, are you nuts? Not even. I love the guy to fun. death. No, they actually thought that. Because you made the Jew jokes, you kicked my well, ass, yeah. you, were, you were so gleeful and beating up the Jew. I'm like, no. But, yeah, the persona plus, I guess, the, uh, the well, the brutality in the ring or whatever. <laughs> but it was, uh, you know, what are, we, what, are you, what are you supposed to do? You know, I said, I was, it's not NPR. I asked Thomas a couple of days ago, I said, uh, is there any way you can pick out, after five great decades, I know it's impossible, could you pick out one or two shows that really stick out, you know. And uh, in my history with the show, it's 9-11. It's the radio fans. But I mentioned the boxing thing. Because if you talk to guys like Joe Beningo, who's been at WFBN for 20 years, to this day he says that's the best one-day show in the history of the station. Uh, the, the gathering of uh, luminaries. Yes. Uh, just, just for that reason alone. Right. Including the drama of the fight. And that was the only time in the last two or three months I think I just got mad at me. He's like, that's a blip. That's a blip. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't involve yourself, you know, Sid, you know, no. in one of my great See, shows. I would have said, you know, you're right, boss. I don't know. What to... <laughs> no, that's what I did. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. What am yeah, I thinking? Yeah, yeah, silly. But in the meantime, I'm thinking. That was stupid. That was it's a great show, man. What do you mean? <laughs> you know, you're up there with Mike and the Man Dog. And, Are you and kidding? Mike Lupica and uh, Mar Marv Albert. Go to YouTube. Mike Breen. Uh, they lo look at the. Uh, Barnacle the... and you still liked him. Fear at the Pier uh, on YouTube. We had uh, Larry Kenny doing the intros. You had David Dinkins sitting in front row. It was a classic. Oh, come on. Fear <laughs> at the Pier, which, by the way, was named by. Bob, Bob Gelb. That's right. Who sold it. Yeah, Fear yeah, at the Pier, because money. it was Chelsea Pier. We made nothing, by the way. I'm still mad about that to this day. Camby Fort. Well, we got paid for Stuttering today. John. No, we didn't. Camby Fort, Stuttering John, and the Howard Stern Show, they made 100000 a piece. Oh, my God. Did and they? Chernobyl wouldn't pay us a penny. We Not got a paid, penny. paid for the day. The, Great. Our, our normal they salary. They wouldn't even buy me breakfast Plus, at the Tenor Flight Diner. Had a concussion and a broken nose. But, but the charity received it. See, we did it for charity. A quarter of a million dollars. Yes, for Imus. For right. the cancer. cancer. So there you go. Intrinsic reward, yes. But uh, it's really over, huh? I know. It's, it's hard to... Uh, it's hard to believe.
But let's take a first break. The number, of course, is uh, 800-848-WABC, 1-800-848-9222. We will cover the big stories today. It is opening day. Russ Salzburg is on the field out in Queens. He'll give us a quick buzz. Sweet. Ready for the Mets and Cardinals. And uh, we'll take all your calls on Imus and your how anxious you are, the anticipation leading up to our morning show coming up on the Monday. The big debut! Oh! The Bernie and Sid in the morning show coming up Monday morning, baby. 77 WABC. Traffic. Diet.com Studios, 77 WABC, New York News Now. Goodbye, I miss 50 Cloudy. Here's the story she'll be talking about. 77 WABC. Lots of tears as I miss said his final goodbye this morning after 50 years on the air. So I'm gonna miss you for talking to you and what you did for me and what you've done for this country. Look at the I miss ranch. What you did for this kid. That was you. But it was you and me. We did that. We did all of it. I'm going to miss that. Yeah, the I-Man dropping the mic. It was about 7.20 this morning. Then he walked out of the studio. Frustrated cabbies laid four coffins on the sidewalk outside City Hall yesterday. They blamed the de Blasio administration for the recent suicides of taxi and livery drivers. The cabbies accused the city of f- allowing app-based ride services such as Uber and Lyft to flourish, taking away their livelihoods. There is a sense of growing despair among drivers across this city. It's a despair among 100,000 families. Yeah, in fact, the city issued medallions were worth about a million bucks in the open market back in 2013. Now they're worth about $200,000. It's opening day out at City Field. The Mets taking on St. Louis. Fans already outside the stadium doing some pre-gaming. Guess what? Mets all day, baby. We all won, day. Man. We made it. We made it this opening season. World Series or bust? I'm excited. I think, honestly, I think we're going to win it. We got a better chance this year if everybody stays healthy. Yeah, the Yankees open the season out in Toronto. 9.35, now traffic transit. Here's Jeff McKay. Path trains are getting back on track right now, but there will be delays. And from the RayCatina.com Traffic Center, I'm Jeff McKay. This report sponsored by Peerless Boilers. Path trains were out for more than an hour heading into and out of the World Trade Center site. That because of a smoke problem. They got everything taken care of. The trains are running again, but with delays. And New Jersey Transit's going to continue to cross onto those path tickets until about 10 o'clock. Right now, across the Hudson, GW Bridge. That's going to be the first to thin out on your way into New York and making your way into Manhattan on the other side. The battery tunnel is jammed into Manhattan because of the problems we had by World Trade. Fire Department crews are still there. As you uh, make your way toward the GW Bridge out of the Bronx, be aware, the Cross Bronx Expressway is going to start having repairs soon into the GW Bridge. And uh, right now, making your way through Queens, Grand Central, slow around LaGuardia. Remember, we're about uh, three and a half hours away from opening day at City Field. So there'll be a lot of extra traffic in the midday and for the afternoon rush hour on the Grand Central and the Whitestone Expressway. And upgrade your boiler today where the 95 percent efficient peerless boiler combi start saving on your heat and hot water bill today go to peerlessboilers.com put in your zip code find the dealer near you remember peerless boilers america's best built boilers and the next traffic report in about 10 minutes from the ray katina.com traffic center jeff mckay on 77 wabc and here's jeff smith with a forecast well if cloudy skies out there today a shower in places including possibly during that mets home opener shouldn't be a big deal shouldn't be causing any rain delays or anything that high getting up to about 50 54. Cloudy with a couple of showers redeveloping late tonight. We're down to 50. Some morning rain tomorrow and then clouds breaking in the afternoon, but still a shower in a couple of spots. Breezy and mild, 62. Upper 50s on Saturday. A nice day out there. Could be an early shower on Easter Sunday. The high getting up to 54. Change your life in only 40 days. Now with a new office in Princeton, New Jersey. Call 855-NJ-DIET or log on to njdiet.com. I'm meteorologist Jeff Smith for 77 WABC, where New York comes to talk. If you're- NJDiet.com presents real people with real weight challenges getting real results. My name is Dan. How'd you do on the program? Phenomenally, 35 pounds in 44 days. Most of it was what? That. There you go. I am on day 14 of the program. Okay, and how much weight have you lost? On my scale at home, approximately 20 pounds. Okay, and has the program been easy to follow? It has been very easy to follow. Mr. Arthur, how much weight have you lost? 38 pounds. 38 pounds in 40 days, correct? Correct. And did you find the program easy to follow? Yes. And how do you feel? I 
feel fabulous. Since I started on day one, I have not had to take insulin. This is my 25th day. Praise God. Hallelujah. Today is the day you will lose fat. Fully supervised, all natural, and customizable. Using blood work and DNA testing. See the results for yourself at njdiet.com. Now with a new office in Princeton, New Jersey. Lose 20 to 50 pounds in 40 days guaranteed. Come see Dr. T at NJ Diet. 1-855-5-NJ-DIET and njdiet.com. Change your life in only 40 days with NJ Diet. Welcome to the Invite Health Buy One Get One Free Spring Event. Invite Health, the leader in top quality health and wellness products formulated with CGMP and non-GMO standards, announces this limited time offer. The sale is on now. Buy any Invite Health supplement at suggested retail and get the second bottle free. Here's the number and write it down because you could speak with an Invite nutritionist seven days a week. The number, 800-804-0973. The number for Invite, 800 804 zero nine seven three you can also visit our boutique style invite stores and receive a free personalized nutritional plan from our healthcare professionals visit invite.nyc for retail locations and additional product offers take advantage of invites limited time buy one get one free spring event contact invite at 800-804-0973 the number again 800 800- 804-0973 or go to invite.nyc Invite Health Luxury Vitamin Brand With Zillow you're not just looking for a house you're looking for the kitchen where you'll bake your baby smash cake the extra bedroom where your sister will constantly crash you're looking for a garage where you'll park bicycles, tricycles and every mode of transportation except your car You're not just looking for a house. You're looking for a place for your life to happen. And whether buying or renting, Zillow makes it easy with smart search features, photos, and more. Zillow. Find your way home. This is Jack from Banyan Hill. You like freedom? I do. You like money? I do too. If you like freedom and money, then you're going to love Freedom Checks. You see, over the next few months, an estimated $34.6 billion is up for grabs to anyone who stakes their claim. Yep, you heard right. $34.6 billion. To get all the details, just go to www.awesomefreedomchecks.com. Thousands of people are already lined up to cash in. Take Doug, for example. He's a 46-year-old from Joplin, Missouri, who's set to get a check for $24,075. And if Doug can do this, I've got a hunch that you can too. But here's the thing. If you want a chance to grab your full share of this $34.6 billion payout, you must have your ducks in a row by May 1st. So don't wait. Get over to www.awesomefreedomchecks.com before the May 1st deadline. That's www.awesomefreedomchecks.com.